back to 30 Taught Me. Welcome to episode three. And today we're going to be continuing our conversation from our last episode um, with my friend Lindsay Morris of Whispers of Encouragement. Lindsay and I attended a Christian college together and we've still remained friends. We're going to continue this series regarding relationships. And today particularly we're going to be discussing cross-sex friendships and answering the question, can men and women really be friends? We hope you enjoy it. When we were, when we were talking about I Kiss Dating Goodbye, that that can, that kind of brings me into my next thought, which was about cross-sex friendships and cross-sex relationships and uh, and the need for boundaries in those, but at the same time the need to have those kinds of relationships. And I think for myself, for the longest time, I just automatically assumed that guarding my heart meant I'm not going to talk to the opposite sex at all. <laughs> just, <laughs> Just don't even talk to me, leave me alone, um, whatever. And I think that, again, with some maturity and with some thought and just coming to into some realization that, you know, God made both man and woman. And it's important that we learn how to get along with each other. Like, I can remember my senior year, I got a freshman roommate. They, for whatever reason, they placed a freshman with me. And so... <laughs> Uh, I was student teaching, so I wasn't even really on campus anyway. And so one day, I, I, I'm in my room, and some girls on my floor, and they're like, um, Kelly, you need to talk to your roommate. And I'm like, I'm never here. <laughs> what do you want me to say to her? And they're like, we saw her on campus, and she has a lot of guy friends. And I was like, oh, really? They were like, yep, she just has a lot of guy friends. You need to talk to her. I'm like, okay. So so then, like, I, she she came in the room after they had left or whatever, and I was like, you know, so who are you hanging out with? And she's like, this guy, this guy, this guy. And I was like, so do you have any girlfriends at all? And she's like, no, not really. And I was like, yeah, we don't do that here. Like, <laughs> you... <laughs> We don't do that here. I was like, pretty much, you're looking like a whore, whether you want to be one or not. So you need to find some girlfriends. That's, that's hilarious. <laughs> she was like, I've always had guy friends. I've always hung around guys. I'm like, I'm just telling you how it is. Like, we don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, too, like, there's definitely strengths and weaknesses that we can learn from each other to help each other, not only personally, but in the body. You know, like there's so much that we need both male and female working together to bring both of their strengths so that we can accomplish things um, for Christ. And just in general in the body, I think that we have this illusion sometimes of what marriage is supposed to be. And, like, I don't, you know, what do I know about marriage? I don't know much, but from, <laughs> as a single person. But I, what I think I do know is that marriage is not a prize. And I feel like sometimes in the body, like, we attribute so much to marriage. Like, you have arrived or whatever if, if you are married. Like, I know for myself, so many times people would be like, oh, my gosh, like, you, um, you graduated from college, you have your master's, you're serving in the church, you love the Lord, you own your own home, you have a great job, and you're not married. I'm like, no, they're like, oh, that's just such a shame, such a shame. And I'm like, but it's, it's not a prize. Like, I, I don't, just because I achieved this, 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 and this, 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 and this, does not mean that I should be awarded marriage. And I think that sometimes we, in the church, we perpetuate this myth that once you have done this, 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 and this, this, then God is going to just come down and award you with Boaz, and you, this is your prize. Okay. <laughs> and we, marriage is not a prize. Yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> and, and absolutely, I think we're very guilty of that in the church, especially for women, thinking that marriage Marriage is the end all be all. Mm -hmm. That once you find your husband, you have arrived. <laughs> and I actually, um, really, I would say I almost went through a season of depression oh. when I first got married because it wasn't what I expected. I thought, this, I will have arrived <laughs> and I will be so happy and I'll never have another care in the world. And that was 
that's it true. My husband is wonderful, but my life went on. And um, yeah, that's a big issue, setting up unrealistic expectations mm-hmm. for marriage and making that the finish line in our minds to some degree. And I, I think that too, like, because we see marriage like that, then we begin to look at each other like prizes instead of what do you really you know like instead of me just saying this is my brother in Christ and he's here to sharpen me in this area of my life now instead you're looking at each other like are you the prize are you the prize are you the prize (laughs) not and not taking the time to value individuals and yeah I think that having the opposite gender when you are single especially is fabulous I think there needs to be clear communication. Um, You know, I had a lot of guy friends when I was single where it was just, like, really ambiguous. Does he like me? Does he want something more out of this friendship? And I never had answers. And I think we've all had that at one point or another. And really, it would make your friendship so much stronger if one of you would just come out and say, hey, we're just friends. This is just platonic, right? (laughs) You know, and just being upfront about it. Um, and, and if you're not just platonic, also being upfront about that and saying, hey, I am your friend, but I do have feelings for you. And, you know, let's just see where this goes as friends. Because really, friendship is a wonderful foundation for marriage. My husband and I have been friends since we were teenagers, like 14 and 15, and never ever would have seen ourselves getting married when we were younger. But as God matured us, um, we turned out to be the right people for each other. So, you know, if you are friends with people of the opposite sex, just be upfront about um, your expectations, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely having real ex- realistic expectations about what is the purpose of behind this friendship. You know, like, if if you have a friend of the opposite sex, like, one, I don't think that that needs to be, like, your close, close buddy, buddy. That's not somebody mm-hmm. you would share your deepest secrets with. That's not somebody that you're going to um, be pouring out all of your heart's desires and everything that's happened to you. Like, that's none of their business. But, like, what is the purpose of this? Like, I know some of my guy friends that I have, our purpose is or our purpose was to serve the youth at church together. That was the purpose. So anything we talked about, it was going to be regarding serving the youth at church. The end, like, and that's yeah. the extent of our friendship. Or um, I do a lot of stuff in the prophetic at my church. And so like, I try and connect with people who are into that. And so some of my guy friendships are, okay, have you been praying? What have you been sensing in the spirit, prophetically, prophesying? Thank you so much, the end. <laughs> you know, and that's it. And like that's that's the extent of our relationship and knowing knowing what is this what is the purpose behind this relationship? Like why is this person in my life? And just and once you kinda of have a clear goal of why they are there, just leave it at that and and don't make anything more of it. And I think sometimes, especially as women, you know, like um, oh my gosh, he said hi. What did that mean? Like it meant hi. <laughs> Didn't yeah. mean anything else. Absolutely. <laughs> and I like what you were saying about, um, you know, being careful what you share with them. I have a friend, single friend, who recently, a single guy friend, asked to have coffee with her so they could talk about their New Year's goals. And she was like, no, <laughs> because that's very personal information. That's almost, um, you know, like making that person an accountability partner if they're going to hold to your goals. So just being, um, you know, aware of of where you stand in your relationship. Because <laughs> if, if someone wants to do something that personal, they should either be, you know, your boyfriend or someone of the same sex that you are just in friendship with. And then I think, too, um, we were talking about this earlier, but when you're having a cross-sex friendship, especially if you are married, just remember that you are friends to both parties. You are not just friends to just one person involved, but you are definitely friends to that person as well as their significant other and their spouse. Just know that, you know, your relationship with that person is not exclusive. It's not just you and them. It's you, them, and, and who else they're, whoever else they're with. 
yeah, obviously when you get married, you're still going to be interacting with people of the opposite sex. My husband is a nurse practitioner school, so at least two-thirds of the people in his program are women. And I know he needs to call them, he needs to text them sometimes about school-related stuff. But it's not like he's just on the phone with them, like, how was your weekend? Yeah, you know, they keep it to school-related. <laughs> and, and for me, there have been times where I'm there's something for work that I need to call a guy and that's fine but you just keep your uh keep it professional keep it school related um be very careful to not build emotional connections when you're married with someone of the opposite sex and that happens when you start talking about things that are off topic of what you need to be focused on and obviously like you said bring their spouse into your friendship it would be very awkward if um, I was very close friends with a guy and my husband wasn't a part of it. But obviously, I have I have a guy friend that I've known since fourth grade that both, both um, my husband and his wife, we all get together once a year when they come to town and catch up, and it's fantastic. But it's because we're all connected together. It's not just me and him. Um, so, yeah. And thank you, Lindsay, for um, being a part of the discussion today. And um, we'll see you guys next time. As always, thanks again for tuning in to 30 Taught Me. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.